Yeah. Two of the piggies are in She's there. thinking about it. So pigs are all locked in and ready to go. We're about ready to hook the truck up and get them headed out here. And uh, you can see they're just in here. And we've had them in there pretty much all night. So made sure they have plenty of food. And we're gonna be taking along a little bu bucket full of their regular grain, just in case they need lured into the their um, holding cell at the slaughterhouse. And um, we'll, we'll be missing them. It's been nice having them on the farm for sure. Working firewood this season is really just about getting a little bit of extra cash for us and about making use of a lot of this wood. It's going to be a lot longer than we thought before we have our fireplace in the house. And I don't want this to go bad after all the work we put into it and it will help get a little bit of extra income for us. So might as well. I thought it might be nice just to see the whole process of getting a wall done. So obviously the sheathing is already up on the wall. We already have our zip system on, but all of the details that we're doing to finish out the wall and make sure that we have a good air seal and that the trim pieces and the you know extras like plumbing and electrical, uh, all of it is on here. Even though this is underneath cover and even though this is just a crawl space wall, we took the time to do everything that we would have done anywhere else on the house siding. So from getting a good air seal all the way up to making sure that any water that does get in under here has a good adequate drainage plane and the walls have the ability to dry. So uh, enjoy.
Yesterday we just about finished up with the under lower porch or west porch um, siding, which is exciting. And we got a fair start or continuation rather on the south wall as well. So here is where we are under porch. And I did manage to at least get cotton painted the next board up. I do have to still move that and that. I'll probably just rip them off and throw them away unless they come off really well. And then over here on this south facing wall, we do get a couple more boards kind of right in here put on. And that window finally has its trim put on. So today we're going to try and get up further on this wall. I have the boards between the windows on the far side there. There's a second set that needs put in here. And my dad measured yesterday and said it's just over eight feet. So unfortunately, I can't cut these 16s simply in half. I'm going to just double check that to make sure. But that will mean we need more boards um, rather than less. So we're looking at maybe 10. I'm going to get that counted. Casey's painting the whole, what should be the last five boards just by hand, since we didn't want to break out the sprayer and do all that rigmarole just for that. And I think she's doing a lot better job than I had done the last time I did by hand. Um, ben and I and Dad are working on the sidewall piece here, getting this last little bit here, and then there'll be a cut board, eight and a half inches or so. Uh, it's going to go across the top, and then. Right in here, I've got the board cut to go on both sides in there. There had been that one previously, but uh, we decided to move it upwards to match this area, not that wall. So visually, you know, it'd be maybe a little bit odd if you're looking at it, but I don't think you're going to notice it. And if you are, well, that's unfortunate for you because that's what I'm doing. So right now we're working on something that is kind of a payoff of something we did a long time ago. So here we're under the deck. And this is our behind ledger flashing to where you've got a flashing that comes up over the top of the ledger and drains. So it's bringing it down the ledger here. And if it goes behind or goes behind at the top, then it kicks it out over the top of your siding. And this was a 3 8 inch. So it's designed specifically for this kind of siding, this lap side. I'm sure it'd work with other sizes, quarter or 5 16ths, but... That's what we're doing here. And then I could have backed out these um, deck uh, hanger screws. I just elected to just work around them, cut out a little V and then I'm gonna fill it with caulk. But in order to get to that, I gotta finish out what I have going on down here on the house far enough that you know we're, we're safe to do that kind of thing. I did a little butterfly. Can you show us your color? So good news. I just put the measuring tape up here on this between window space and found that once the trim was on this window behind me here, um, it went from questionably more than eight to eight foot and three eighths of an inch, which is actually exactly what you want. Three sixteenths for either side becomes three eighths and you need three sixteenths spacing off of the trim. So if I cut all of these boards going up and down at exactly eight foot, then we have the correct caulk spacing. Now you will lose the width of the saw blade. So it's gonna be a slightly larger than required caulk spacing on both sides, but that's perfect. I'm really excited about that. That will mean fewer boards. So if we're looking over here, we can see what we've already finished out. In addition to this board here, which we have all the way across, we're gonna need one, two, three, four, five more boards. We have the scraps for here already cut. We're going to need five boards here. So that's going to be two and a half more 16 foot boards there. And then down here, you're essentially going to need four more boards. So something like seven. And you can see we are done asterisk with the lap side so obviously all the joints need painted and i have like these little strips next to the window over on that side that i still haven't done because 
you know, that just sounds like something that wouldn't take any time at all, so why bother? But as far as the siding goes, I mean, that's, that's it for the lap siding. And, you know, we have a little bit of work up in here, and then this run, and then this is a beautiful, fully clothed lady, and then it's just touch-ups from there, which, thank goodness, so exciting. But once that's done, we still have, you know, obviously that little bit of roof, and then this roof, and that back roof that all need to be done before we can call the outside, you know, ready for the winter. And there's a lot more than that that I can do and maybe will do, maybe won't, I don't know. Um, I could do it in the winter time because it's undercover. Things like putting the roof on the deck. Did I say that was basically everything? I forgot something. So this door here, this beautiful eight foot skinny little door, it needs, it needs protection. Okay, so, this is an exterior grade door with an asterisk, a lot of asterisks going on today, apparently. Um, it needs to have a cover and it should be basically like a 10 foot across. So at least five feet out, if I understand right, from manufacturer. Um, and that will keep the majority of water off and it will keep the majority of the sun off, pretty much all the sun and its current location and pretty much all the water. So we're gonna run a roof. It's gonna go from somewhere like right there over to like right there. It's gonna come out this way, um, past the deck to the edge. It'll be an eight by eight, and that should give it adequate cover. Um, keep it safe, keep it protected. And I almost forgot this back deck doesn't have any stairs down yet, so there's that too. Well, I just ran over a beehive. Wasp nest, actually. Do you see all those little ones swarming there? I don't think I destroyed the nest yet. And I'm kind of stupid, so here we go. Still swarming. Yes, sirree. Thing is, that's my boy's playhouse. And I do not like there being a nest that close. So I think we'll just keep going. Oh boy, I definitely found it that time. Look at that. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. I don't have any wasp spray, but I do have a hose. I'm operating under the theory that the bee hive won't enjoy, the wasp hive won't enjoy being destroyed by water or becoming a pond. Yeah. Okay. So there should be water coming soon. I just turned it on to a trickle. We are doing a little concrete work. There it is. So we're down there where Clarkie is, got a form set up. That's for this HVAC unit box. And uh, don't lean back. Don't put your face near where the dust comes up. Just leave it kind of like right there for a little while. Yeah. What? All right, take the hose out now. Let it just let it just drain on the road. That's okay. It's just on a trickle. A little bit soupy. Not bad for first run here. This we are pouring concrete today. All you viewers out there, we are making room for our new HVAC system. A little harder than that. You can hit it as hard as you can, probably, actually. <laughs> Give it a hard whack. There you go. Day two of the wasp saga. My friendly neighborhood yellow jackets. 
Oh yeah, I can see part of the construction there. They're coming in and out. I did not get that whole thing. A little bit of a rainy day today. Not too bad so far, but I'm working on the underside of the porch and um, not really getting water down under the trees all that much. And so Casey and the boys are out harvesting the season's pumpkins. Elsewhere in the valley, it's not really showing you know, that it's fall yet, but all of our squash plants and pumpkin plants have decided that it's time. Biggies are all gone. And uh, there's the side of our wasp nest. Got all that ready to go. A lot of pushing left to do, clean up before I can get in there and plow. Tomatoes are still putting on fruit, but you can see from the leaf color that the squash plants think they're done. It's time. What'd you find, bud? Squashes. I saw another baby squash right there. A little bitty one. Yeah. See you on the next video. Right. Here's Theo's, Theo's on the channel. If you, if you have, if this town is new, get subscribed. Link, click the link below. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you next time.